Okay, so connecting with the previous topic, and the topic was the application of Bayes theorem in decision analysis. So in this lecture, in this topic, I'm just going to use once again the conditional probability concept, the Bayes theorem concept, and how we will plot different decision trees, how we will take different actions, how we will show different outcome of taking a decision, how we will make a trade-off, etc., etc. So uh, in this lecture, I will visually represent some decision trees and then we will calculate the outcome from those trees, from the nodes, from the branches of those trees in order to decide which decision will be the most fruitful. So before going to that, so you need to understand what is the decision tree. So decision tree is a visual representation of choices. What kind of choices? For example, if we throw a coin, what are the choices? If we invest in a specific project, what are the choices? You will earn more or you will lose money. What will be the consequences? Your profit will be going up or it will be going down. What will be the probability of winning and what will be the probability of losing? And what kind of opportunities you have at the moment? So for this purpose, we will construct decision tree. So decision tree, you can see from this tree, there are different options. These are the main options, different options. And when you coming from the, 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 the branches to the down, this will be the outcome. So a way of breaking down complicated situation down to easier to understand scenario. So that is why we have different options. We have different chances. We have different consequences. We have different probabilities. We have different opportunities. What to do? What to not to do? Should we need to invest? Should we not need to invest? Should we need to take that action or not? So for this purpose, we will construct decision trees. So you need to remember these three different things, these three different notation, which we will be using in decision trees. A box, normally we construct a box in the start, okay? A box is used to show a choice that the manager or the decision maker has to make. Okay, let's suppose uh, I'm going to invest in money. So from this box, I will decide should I need to invest or should I not need to invest? So I mean one and this is two. Then a circle will be appear is used to show that a probability outcome will occur. So for example, in this box, I take a decision. I need to invest. Let's suppose this is invest. Okay, this is invest and this is not invest, not to invest. So if you invest, the outcome will be, the stock will be going up. So this is up and this is down. Similarly, when you not invest, so there is also a chance that your stock will be going up or your stock will be going down. So basically, we will construct these circles. So you can see, you can now understand the concept of circle in a box. A circle is used to show that a probability outcome will occur. When you take an action, then definitely that action will have some reaction. That action will have some outcome. If you invest, the stock will be going up or it will be going down. If you decide to enroll in a specific course, the chance will be that you will learn more or you will learn nothing. So basically we construct this circle to show that a probability outcome will occur. And you can see we have already constructed these lines you can see these different lines we construct in order to connect the circle and boxes, connect outcome to their choices or probability outcome. So this is just a simple interpretation of decision tree. Now I'm just going to discuss a very simple example that how you will use, how you will construct such like decision trees while considering a very simple example. So as I already mentioned, decision trees are used to calculate expected payoff for different decisions. We will illustrate the, their use with the following problem. So you need to remember this very simple example. A company is considering an investment in a certain stock. What they doing? They considering an investment. They want to invest their money in certain stock. The company assess that the stock has a 60% chance of going up. So what is the probability that the stock will be going up? It is probability up. If I just write it, probability of up will be 0 0.60. So what will be the probability of down? 1 minus 0 0.60. So it will be 0 0.4. So this is the probability that the stock will be going up. In which case, 
So if they start going up, in that case, the company will make a profit of 20,000. But on the other side, if they start going down, then in that case, the company will lose 20,000. So now, this is very clear from the statement that they want to invest in a specific stop, stock. There is a chance of 60% that it will be going up. And there is a chance of 40% because 1 minus 60, so 40% a chance that it will be going down. Now, if the stock going up, there is a chance that, uh, that they can uh, earn a profit of 20,000. If it is going down, then they will lose 20,000. There is another option. The company has the option of paying a financial advisor. See, this is now C1000, they are paying to the financial advisor, the expert, who have expertise. So now they are paying this amount, so C is the amount which they are paying to the financial advisor. In order to get their suggestion, we will allow C to vary. The advisor is known to be 80% successful at forecasting a stock increasing. So, I mean, this is the expertise of the advisor and he is successful 80%. The successful chance of the advisor that the stock will be going up is 20% increase and 70%. So, the advisor say that there is 80% success chance that the stock will be going up and 70% successful at forecasting and when he forecast that the sea that you not need to invest you will be unsuccessful there is the probability 70 percent we will draw the decision tree for this problem and describe how it is constructed so these are basically conditional probability i have already discussed in great detail in my previous lecture this is not simple probability this is conditional because the advisor is known to be 80 percent successful at for constant stock increase so I mean, if I just write this probability successful, yeah, for example, yes, go to invest in this, the stock will be increased. Let's suppose this is up. So this is 0.80 percent. And this is also a conditional probability. This, the uh, successful at forecast a stock increase and 70 percent successful a forecasting stock decrease. Okay. So, this is also probability, conditional probability that it will not be up, it will be down. Successful, that it will be down. So, you can understand these probabilities and these are six simple probabilities. So, we have just tried. Now, this is a problem. This is a complex problem. What should we need to do? Should we need to invest? Should we need to not invest? Or should we need to go and uh, get uh, advice from the advisor, but for that advice, you need to pay C1000 amount, which is the fee of that advisor. So, first of all, step one, set out decision and variable. So, the most important thing you need to face, you need to extract the information from a specific problem. Firstly, we set out the possible decision and variable outcome. Decision are denoted by square boxes, they already mentioned, and variable outcome by circles. In this example, how many decisions we need to take? Three. Why should we need to invest by the stock? Don't buy the stock or go and take advice from the advisor. So we basically, if we start from a decision box, we will construct this box by don't buy and go for advice. Okay. So basically, initially, there are three choices. Now, if we buy, for example, if we buy, there are two variable outcomes. Stock goes up. So, if I construct this at this place, okay, buy, then th there is a chance that it will be going up or down. Okay, don't buy. If you don't buy, up and down. If you go to the advice, then if he gives you the advice, you can read it from if you don't buy, there are two variable outcomes, stock goes up or stock goes down. So you can see stock goes up and stock goes down. If you take advice and don't buy mean nothing because you're doing nothing. So you not need to take, you not need to calculate these things because in 
we are not interested in this one. But if you go for advice, if we take advice, then there are two different variable outcome. Advisor say yes, advice to buy. Our advisor say no. Advisor advises you not need to buy. In each case, we must know now make a further decision. Buy or don't buy. That is, do we take the advice or not? Finally, we again have the possible outcome of stock goes up or stock goes down. So, in step two, what we will do when we complete this decision tree, we will calculate the returns. Next, we work out the returns for each possible combination of decision and outcome. That is, for the end of each branch, on the right hand side, we work out the profit. So, you can see this is just basic the decision tree which we construct from uh, the given example. So, as I already mentioned, we will construct a box buy, don't buy. So, if you don't buy, there is mean nothing to do. The stock will be not going up, not will be going down. So, 0 multiply this, this is the probability, this is the probability. But if you go for advice, advisor say buy. Why we construct this circle? Advisor say buy and advisor say don't buy. Then, once again, if advisor say you buy, then you will take decision. You will take the step. Should you need to buy or should you not need to buy? So, you need to understand this box because in this scenario, advisor say buy, but you will decide. So, when you need to decide, you need to construct a box. Then, buy, same, this is the thing, buy, don't buy. When you buy, there is a chance that the stock will be going up, there is a chance that the stock will be going down, don't buy. So, because you already pay minus C, okay, stock will be going up or stock will be going down. And if the advisor say don't buy, then you need to decide because let's suppose, okay, forget about the advisor advice. I am going to invest. I am going to buy. I am not going to buy. Then the possible outcome. So, you can see from this. Now, this is very, very important step now, step two. We work out the return for each possible combination of decision and outcome. That is for the end of each plan on the right hand side, we work out the profit. So, why right hand side? Okay, this is now the right hand side. We will calculate these probabilities. How we will calculate? So, I am going to show you now to calculate these probability. Next, we work out the probabilities of each variable outcome. This is done from left to right. So, this is done from left to right. So, now we will calculate and we will come in from this toward this side. You can see, we will calculate this, 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 this and this. Note that this is done from left to right. Note that all probability are conditional on outcome to the left. For example, if we take advice and the advice is good, then the probability of the stock going up is now the conditional probability as I already mentioned of the stock going up given advice that it will. Calculating these probabilities is generally the most time consuming task in producing and decision tree and sometimes it is also creating problems because of their complex nature. So, now in this question, let u represent that the stock going up, d represent the stock going down, y represent the advisor say yes, buy it, m represent the advisor say no, don't go to buy it. So, what is the probability the stock will be going up? So, I already mentioned to you the company assess that the stock has a 60 percent chance of going up. So, probability of up is 0 and 1 minus probability up, probability up, up, which is 1 minus 0 0.6. So, this one, what the advisor say? He say, why represent the advisor say by given that the stock will be going up. So, what is the probability? We will allow, see, the advisor is known to be 80 percent successful. So, this is conditional probability, okay, that the stock will be going up it will be increased and what is the probability of this? So, how we will write this probability of yes, he say by it, there is a chance that it will be going up and there is a probability, this is also, sorry I use y but this is n, this is n, okay, he say don't go and 70 percent successful at forecasting a stock decrease. So, he say don't go, there is 70 percent chance that stock will be decreased. So, n given that it will be decreased which is 70 percent. 
I hope now you understand these probabilities. Now we need to complete the decision. To complete the decision tree, we need to know probability of yes. What is probability of yes? How we will calculate probability of yes? Say that he say to you that there will there will be a chance that the stock will be going. So what is the probability of yes? What is the probability of no? Probability given that he say yes. Let me construct this decision tree for you. So buy, don't buy, and advise. So this will be going up, down. Advisor say, advisor say yes, invest. He say no. Then you will take the decision. If he say yes, buy, and don't buy. Okay, then don't buy. Up and this is down. Similarly, up and this is down. If he say don't go, then you will take decision. Buy and don't buy. Once again, if you buy, there is a chance that it will be going up. There is a chance that it will be going down. And at this don't buy, there is a chance that it will be going up and there is a chance that it will be going down. Now we need to calculate this probability. So probability of yes. What is the probability that he says yes? And what is when we calculate probability of yes? Automatically this will be one minus probability of yes. We will calculate this probability of no. Now if he says yes and the stock going up, how we will calculate this? If he says yes, given go invest there is eighty percent chance. What will be the probability that the stock will be going up? So we need to calculate this probability, and we also need to calculate this probability. He say, "Don't go, don't go." There is a chance that the stock will be going down, and the stock will be going down. So we also need to calculate this thing, this and this. Okay. So probability of yes. So if you understand. The concept of bias theorem. Because before going to understand this specific example, you need to understand the concept of bias theorem. In bias theorem, I already discussed the defective probabilities. So now, in this scenario, there are two things involved, two states. One is defect, one is decrease, and one is increase. So probability of yes, you can see probability of yes. Given that, how we will calculate this yes probability? Probability of yes, given that the stock will be going up. So this probability is given to you, and from where this is from the statement of the question. He is he is successful that the stock will be going up. Okay, this is given to you. So he is successful. Yes, go. The stock will be zero point eight, and. Probability of up, probability of a zero point six. So zero point six, this one, and this probability is zero point eight. Plus, plus because from yes there are two different branches. One is up and one is down. He say probability of up. This is given to you and yes. So what is the probability? That the stock will be going down, he say yes. The stock will be going down. So he already given this to you. You can see this, this one. What will be the one minus probability of D, which will be equal to probability of Y given D. Okay, one minus so n given D. N given D mean it will be no. Don't go. The stock will be going decrease. So one minus zero point seven zero point three. So you can see this is zero point three. Okay, this is equal to probability of y given d and probability of d is zero point four. So you calculate zero point six and probability of no is one minus probability of yes, which is zero point four. Okay, then we need to calculate some more probabilities. What kind of more probabilities? Probability of given that he say yes so you can see this is yes he say yes buy so we can also write this yes okay go and this is no 
So now we need to calculate probability of yes, this is given to you. Yes, he say yes to you and now we want to calculate this probability. So up given that yes and we also need to calculate he say no and the stock going down. Stock going down. So while using the Bayes theorem, probability of up given that he say yes to you. So now there are two different options, two nature of states. One is probability if he say that the stock will be going up given that he say yes. So probability of yes given that up or probability of u and divided by probability of y. So we have already calculated this probability of y and probability of y we have already calculated this probability of y at this place y given u. So this is probability of y given u into probability of u. You can see this and probability of y given d plus probability of y given d probability of y given d into probability of d. So this is already we have already calculated this and this is the same concept of Bayes theorem. So probability of y given u probability of y given u is 0 0.8 0 0.8 and this is 0 0.6 probability of u is 0 0.6 so divided by probability of y probability of y is 0 0.6 so at this way you will calculate 0 0.8 similarly you can calculate because this is up given yes what will be the probability of probability of down given yes so 1 minus 1 minus probability of u given y and this is the thing so 1 minus 0 0.8 0 0.2 similarly probability of u given n so what is this calculate this thing up given that he say no so now we need to calculate this one so how we will write this while using the concept of base theorem probability of n given u into probability of u divided by probability of n so probability n given u, the probability of n given u is n given u is 1 minus probability of yes given u. So probability of uh, yes given u is 0 0.8, 0 0.8. So this will be 0 0.2. So you can see 0 0.2 and probability of u is this one. Probability of n we have already calculated 0 0.4 in the previous slide, 0 0.3. Similarly, probability of d given n. So 1 minus probability u given n 0 0.7. Now I will show you we need to write these probabilities. So now the stock going up probability is 0 0.6. In this that case you will earn 20,000. The stock going down. So 1 minus 0 0.6, 1, 0 0.4. The stock will be going down. You will lose 20,000. So 0 0.6 into 20 plus 0 0.4 minus 20 is equal to 4. So from this, this 4 come. You need to write this on the circle above because this is the outcome from this decisions. Okay, as I already mentioned, don't buy because you are not uh, going to invest. So I mean, it will not affect on the whole things. But this is very, very important. If you go for advice, so we have already calculated probability of how we will calculate this probability. What is probability of up given that he say yes because he say yes. So we have already calculated. You can see this probability up given that he say yes. And what will be this 0 0.21 minus 0 0.8. So this is 0 0.2. Now 0 0.8 and you can see this is the probability and 20,000 will be the profit if they start going up and minus C because we need to pay to the advisor fee. So 0 0.8 into 20 minus C plus 0 0.8, 0 0.2 into minus 20 minus C, minus 20 minus C because in this scenario there is a chance of 0.2 in this case, your stock will be going down. You will lose 20,000 plus you also need to pay the advisor fee. So that is why minus 20 minus C.
So when you uh, simplify it, it will be equal to 12 minus C. You need to write it. Similarly, what is this? Don't buy. And he say yes. And the stock going up. How we will calculate? So we have already calculated this. The stock going up, he say yes. 0 0.8, 0 0.2. In this case, this, there is only advisor uh, fee because you don't buy it. You are not investing. So 0 0.8 into this. Once again, it will be minus C. How? 0 0.8 into minus C plus 0 0.2 into minus C. It will be equal to minus C. Okay. Similarly, this is also conditional. So we have already calculated 0 0.3. From here it came probability up. This is up. And given that he said don't go n. So you can already calculate this from this formula which is 0 0.3 and this is 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.3 so which is 0 0.7. In this scenario your stock you will you are uh, you will earn 20,000 but you need to pay the advisor fee. So 0 0.3 0 0.3 into 20 minus c plus 0 0.7 into minus 20 minus c. So when you ca calculate this, you will get this thing minus 8 minus c. Similarly, from this one, because you don't buy, so just like this one, it will be minus c. Then you need to choose the maximum one. Okay, we are coming from the right hand side to the left. We are coming to the roots, from branches to the roots. So please try to understand. Now you need to choose in these two options because there, these are two options. You need to choose the maximum one. So, which one is maximum? Because this is total negative. So, we choose 12 minus C because this is maximum. If C is less than 12, this value will be positive. Minus 8 minus C and minus C. So, this one is further minor from minus C. So, we just take the maximum one. Remember, when you come into the boxes, you need to take the maximum from the option. Remember this point. So 12 minus C and minus C. And we have already calculated probability of yes in previous slide, which is 0 0.6 and this is 0 0.4. Now 0 0.6 into 12 minus 12 minus C plus 0 0.4 minus C, this one. When you simplify it, you will get this one. Now this is 4, this is 0, and this is 72 minus C. So if C, if C is, let's suppose if C is 2, so 7.2 minus 2, so this is 5.2, so 5.2, let's suppose 5.2 is greater or 4 greater, yes 5.2 is more better than 0 and 4, so we need to take advice. If this value is 3, if this value is 3, in this scenario, it will be 4.2. So in 4.2, still this is better than this. But if C is 4, then this will be 3.2. 3.2 is less than. So we need to buy. We not need to go for advice. But if the C value is less than 4, we are still in the profit zone. Otherwise, we not need to buy it. So using the conditional probability, we can calculate the expected return of each option node working from right to left by choosing the decision which maximizes the expected return. We can also work out the expected return at each decision node. Working back to the root decision gives us our answer. So as I already mentioned, in our case, we see that our initial decision depend on C. If 7.2 minus C is greater than 4, then we take advice. Otherwise, we just buy. That is provide the advice cost less than or equal to 3.2, we will take it. So I hope you understand this example. Uh, if you have some specific question, then we will discuss in the interactive session. Thank you.